Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Richard Moglin and welcome back to our Stock Market Outlook video sponsored by MarketSmith. As usual, we'll run through the market indexes, leading stocks, a few different sources of sentiment, the IBD, big picture article, and finally the wishing wealth, GMI signal. And finally, at the end of the video, I'll put all those different sources of information together and give you my overall take on the health of the market. And if you do enjoy my analysis at any time, please go ahead and take the time right now to leave me a like down below. It really helps me out and my channel. And of course, subscribe if you wanna see more videos just like this one every single week. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and dive right in with the NASDAQ um, composite and analyze the chart. Um, overall this week, we had a push up early on, then a pullback pretty much into the end of the week, and then a pretty strong close on that Friday candle right here. Uh, we are above a rising 21 EMA, so the kind of short term time frame is up, and we're back above that 50 SMA, and that's just starting to curl up under price a little bit, but we did get rejected at that kind of flatlining a 200 day moving average. So at the moment, the shortest term trend is down over the past few days. Uh, we're above an intermediate trend, the 21 EMA, and we're kind of mixed on those longer term time frames, the 50 SMA and the 200 SMA. So we have to see whether this is just kind of a failed breakout and we kind of roll over or we kind of rally here and continue to push up the right hand side of this overall price base. Um, overall, to me, this pullback looks very constructive. If we go ahead and erase all these bars, you can see we were up basically 15 days in a row and then we had three days of pullback and people are already on Twitter uh, saying the trend is over. So remember to put everything in perspective and this is kind of natural consolidation, corrective activity after such a powerful move. And what remains to be seen is how does stuff react from this point? Do we continue to see um, leaders hold up, um, bounce off logical support, pivots, uh, moving averages, or do we start to see more and more failures like we saw in the semi space with a bunch of names, GFS, ACLS, um, AOSL, where they really broke down, broke pivots, broke expectations. Uh, that kind of um, feedback from the market is really what's gonna determine what is the trend and are we still in a healthy uptrend? And I think it's important to keep in mind that even though semi names and more tech related names got hit uh, reasonably hard late last week, uh, the real leaders of this push up have been in the XLE sector, um, oil and gas, miners, materials, um, all those names continue to trend really nicely and continue to obviously move above those moving averages. So um, things are still acting um, pretty much fine. Uh, we did see a pullback late last week, but we'll just have to wait and see whether we get supported at logical um, support here and um, basically build out from here. I'd love to see a few more weeks of sideways consolidation and then a continued push through that 200 SMA. Uh, with that said, let's go on over to the S&P 500, which um, as usual, has been a little bit stronger. You can see we're above that 200 SMA. We're above all the moving averages as of this moment, above the rising 21. The 50 SMA has started to curl up just a little bit, um, but we also got that kind of similar breakout failure, um, and we'll have to see whether we continue to build off this level and maybe go sideways a few days, push up, and just kind of build under this now pivot, um, which then I'd love to see us push up through and make our way back to all-time highs. But overall, uh, the trend is up on most of the time frames on this index. Uh, moving on to the IWO, the Russell 2000 Growth um, Index, you can see that uh, we didn't quite make it to this 266.07 pivot. We got rejected from that point, um, but we're kind of pulling back to this area of potential support. Um, we're above a rising 21 EMA. The 50 SMA is just starting to curl up under price. So if this can really get going, I think that would be very constructive. I'd love to see this break out through this level, 266.07 and make its way back towards that 200 SMA. Uh, the 250 level, I think, is a little bit critical here. And uh, I think if this index can really get going, uh, like I said, this would be really good for a lot of the growth names, which are usually um, those kind of lower um, market cap, uh, mid cap names um, in this type of index. Uh, looking at the Russell 2000 in general, uh, this is just a little bit stronger. We managed to break out through this pivot, uh, but once again, we got that same kind of failure, and now we're back right at this spot of consolidation. And this spot isn't just the pivot. You can see it's a low of this entire base. So I'd love to see us kind of break through that point and have that transition to being support and then start to push and get our way back above the 200 SMA and make our way back up the right-hand side of this overall base. But um, overall pivot failure here, uh, but finding support at this logical spot. And we do have those moving averages starting to curl up under price. Moving on, we've got the FFTY, the Russell 2000 Growth Index. Uh, we found support on Friday at the 21 EMA here. 50 SMA is starting to curl up under price. And once again, we got that same kind of pivot failure at that same spot. And uh, the 40 point, um, the 40 level on this chart is really that relevant spot where uh, it's the low of this base as well as 
uh, lining up with a few pivots within the overall chart. So once again, I'll obviously see us kind of build out here, um, maybe go sideways for a few days, then push up on volume, get back above that 40 level and make our way up the right hand side and challenge at 200 SMA. But overall, the indexes are just kind of pulling back after a bunch of days up in a row. So once again, this looks completely normal. And now it's all about how does it react from this point? Do we kind of reconfirm to the upside or do we continue to break expectations and break through those moving averages and logical areas of support? Uh, with that said, let's move on over to some growth leaders because that's a great way to get a sense of how things are actually doing in the market. Sometimes the indexes kind of are skewed to those mega cap names, which we will go through Apple, Amazon, all of those names. So let's go ahead and start out with Tesla, which is always good to analyze here. Um, this is acting super strong, especially after, um, I don't know how many days up pretty much in a row, 13, 14, 15. And now we just have basically a three, four, 5% pullback here. Um, and this day they reported the stock split. So we kind of got that gap up. I would have really liked to see that stock consolidate at that 1000 level form a handle. Uh, but now we're kind of getting two handles in one um, and we've got to pivot right at this spot. So if this can hold this gap, I think that'd be very constructive. Uh, but if not, it might need a few more weeks to set up. Maybe it pulls back all the way to a thousand if we do undercut this low and pull back into this prior consolidation. But overall acting pretty well within the stage one with a standard pivot of uh, basically 1200 here on Tesla. Uh, great earnings, sales margins, all of that. And let's actually go ahead and open up that fund ownership and move on to NVIDIA. So overall, the semi space got hit pretty hard late last week and NVIDIA actually held up a lot better than most, um, but it is also testing prior support, um, undercut this kind of consolidation pivot right at this high right here. And now it's testing this area as well as the 21 EMA. So I definitely wanna see it stick here, find some support and kind of move up and start to U-turn and make its way back up the right-hand side of this base. Um, AMD got hit a lot harder and many of the other names which we'll go through um, also got hit pretty hard. You can see we had a little bit of a downgrade, I believe on this day, gap down and finish right at the lows and then uh, not much doing on Friday either. Uh, it really started with this downside reversal here on that would have been Wednesday, taking out both sides of this range and closing right at the lows. It's almost like somebody knew that downgrade was happening uh, so once again, it's very important to pay attention to price action. And we also had a failure at this pivot right here. Uh, GFS, I know a lot of people are watching this name, myself included. Um, this really kind of failed the breakout, didn't fall through on this day right here. On this Wednesday, we had a big pullback to the 69.34 area, uh, that prior pivot right here, um, and a nice reaction, great close. And then we really kind of defied expectations. Um, and had a big downside reversal on this day. Uh, definitely you wanna be stopped out. So even if you picked it at the lows here, uh, you most likely were taken out here and then basically fall through on Thursday and Friday all the way back to this prior um, pivot area. So definitely negative action here and this is gonna need a little bit of time before it resets. Um, and right now it's just not a focus because of this really negative action. This looks like distribution to me, uh, but it can always set back up. So I'll keep an eye on this one and just have it in my watch list and go through it um, pretty much every single day, every single week. Um, AOSL also showed very similar action. Uh, downside reversal here. This is actually a pretty cleaner chart. Uh, downside reversal here, failing this pivot. Um, I actually tried it a few times during these days. Um, got stopped out for small losses and protected myself from this major decline all the way back to that 50 SMA from all time highs. Um, and uh, yeah, it doesn't look great right here and definitely needs a lot of time to reset. Um, also bringing up ACLS. This is another semi name that got hit pretty hard negative action on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, failing this pivot. Uh, so not really the type of action you want from a potential leading group. And usually uh, when the semis are strong, tech is strong in general. Um, so this doesn't look too good for those tech names. Moving on, let's take a look at what's actually leading as of this moment. Let's take a look at some XLE names. So we've got BTU acting really strong, uh, just trending above the 21 EMA, looks great. Uh, maybe setting up a little bit of a breakout into next week. Uh, strong action on Thursday and Friday. Uh, we've also got COP acting well, um, XOM. Uh, you can see COP pulling back into that 21 EMA and then 100 level, a nice confluence there. COP, um, or actually Exxon Mobil setting up a pivot on Thursday's high into next week. So definitely one to have on your radar. Um, also bring up um, FANG. This has been acting pretty well. Uh, got a nice pullback into that 21 EMA area. Once again, potentially setting up into next week, uh, this kind of pullback on declining volume. Uh, we've also got some mining and materials names. We've got ARM or actually, sorry, AMR here, um, setting up pretty much a high tight flag 
Um, a little bit of a failure and squat on Friday, but still looks potentially set up for next week. You can see a really strong action uh, forming this flagpole, and then you've got this flag forming here. Um, also, we've got CF in terms of the fertilizers. Um, ag names still holding up pretty well. It did undercut that 100 level and kind of a failure of this breakout, so maybe needs a little bit more time. Um, MOS within, within that same industry looks very similar, uh, but so far these names are continuing to trend nicely above that 21 EMA. Also bringing up some defense names, I saw this from uh, Matt uh, trading Equilibrium on Twitter. Also saw these in my screens here. Uh, looks pretty good. You've got a pivot at Thursday's high and it's overall kind of flag type pattern. Um, RTX is another name uh, within the same kind of industry uh, that's acting pretty well. You've got basically a DTL here right at that 100 level. So once again, nice confluence of the 21 EMA, DTL 100 level. You've got a couple of things going and just a nice trend above that 21 EMA. Moving on, we've got MP, and this has been super strong coming out of this cup and handle. You've also got some early entries potentially here as well as here. A um, little bit of a failure inside day and down on Friday, so it might need a little bit of rest consolidation, uh, but nice action above a rising 21 EMA. Also bringing up PSTG. This has been acting super strong after this gap up in the base, and it's right at that prior pivot, so I definitely want to see a respect that 35 level and uh, basically reconfirm to the upside after pulling back on a declining volume and acting pretty constructive. Um, also bringing up some uh, kind of uh, cybersecurity names. These have been trending nicely. Pan W, a leader within the space. Uh, CrowdStrike also acting pretty strong up the right-hand side, now back above a rising 21 and 50 SMA. Uh, but we've got that 200-day SMA test um, in store for us. So I definitely want to see maybe a slight pullback, consolidation, rest for a week or so, and then a pop through that on volume, really kind of showing that institutions are accumulating again. And I want to see them basically support the stock and give it the power it needs to move back up towards the right-hand side and into all-time highs. Um, also moving on, we've got SCDG representing these solar names here, um, basically still building out this pivot, still on watch for next week. This stock has had quite wide ranges recently, so I'd love to see that tighten, maybe an inside day in the wick, and then a burst through that, breaking through the pivot. That would be the ideal scenario. Um, and moving on, let's go ahead and cover uh, some of the mega caps. Let's start with um, Apple um, acting super strong after this push up here. It has pulled back for three straight days, but it's going back basically 3% um, of a 20% move. So keep everything in perspective. Um, and it's back above a rising 21 and 50 SMA. Uh, moving on, we've got, uh, let's go to Amazon first here. Um, also a super powerful move off the bottom, pulling back into this prior pivot. So definitely a spot we want to see it stick. And it's got that 200 SMA to deal with right at this level as well. Uh, we've also got Google here. Uh, this has been pretty strong pulling back into the 200 SMA. So definitely potentially a spot to enter next week through this DTL um, and nice action on Friday, although on lower volume. Uh, we've also got Facebook. Let's bring up that chart here. Uh, this is also forming a similar structure, but we're below a declining 50 SMA in the context of a downtrend below declining 200 SMA uh, with a huge gap down on volume. So uh, this one definitely not high up on my list by. We've also got Netflix um, in a similar situation, gap down here um, up against a declining 50 SMA. And uh, you can see from this RS rating, that's no longer a leader as of this moment. So that's pretty much it for those mega caps. Um, and lastly, let's talk about bros here. Uh, this has been basically on my focus the past few weeks, uh, but it's also pretty tough to trade. So you have to kind of look for intraday spots um, and definitely negative action failed uh, fall through on this day. And then a big downside reversal here on this day, undercutting 60 and pulling back all the way to this prior basically DTL entry point. And this name definitely needs a little bit more time to kind of form up here, uh, tighten and, uh, you know, just continue to build a spot um, within this overall institutional due diligence phase. So that's pretty much it for Growth Stock Leaders. Let me know your thoughts down below on these names. And if there's a name that you think I should be paying attention to, drop it down below in the comment section as well. And while you're at it, if you haven't hit that like button and you're still watching this point, definitely go ahead and take the time. It really helps me out and my channel, as I said before. And let's move on to sentiment. And moving on to sentiment, we saw a slight increase from 41% to about 43.7% on my Twitter surveys. Not much to say about that. Um, but look at the name exposure index. We're still seeing a steady increase up to 79.72. So getting a little bit high actually on this metric and on the put call ratio. Let's go on over to that. Uh, we're showing an increase, which is good. We're climbing that wall of worry. And lastly, we've got the bulls versus bears poll, which is still uh, crossing. But we actually crossed back down. So uh, once again, 
uh, still pretty low here on the bulls, which is a good thing. Uh, moving on to the IBD big picture article, the headline is uh, stock market shows resilience as bond yield surge transports whacked amid growth concerns. I uh, discussed the action on Friday, um, inverted yield curves, a little bit about um, some metrics that came in and also highlighted some uh, different healthcare stocks worth keeping an eye on. Haven't looked at the name Dexcom in a while, but it's back on my radar here. And they discuss patients as well as some of the oil and gas names. And overall, their take is a confirmed uptrend with one distribution day on the S&P 500. Uh, lastly, we've got the Wishing Wealth GMI signal, which is still green since March 22. And the GMI score on Thursday was a six out of six. So overall, my current outlook is an uptrend and it all kind of comes down to how's the market react to the pullback late last week? Uh, do we see continued weakness? Uh, does the weakness in the semi names kind of signal something deeper for growth stocks? Um, and does kind of leadership continue to hold up, hold those moving averages, hold those pivots and uh, continue to build out their right hand sides? But overall, we'll just kind of have to wait and see what happens and continue to manage risk along the way. Um, and that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed If you did, please go ahead and leave a like down below and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys in future videos. Thanks.